going to be talking about how to be intentional in your career. So I want to go ahead and dive in, right? What made me want to do this particular topic, y'all, is because how many of you guys have been seeing that people are being laid off? This is not the last thing to scare you because just as much as I've been seeing people be laid off, I've been seeing folks get hired too. So this is not the kind of live stream to instill fear. But I wanted to talk about this because I've been seeing the opposite reaction of what I think that people should be doing in this time. Hey, Ms. Isis, good morning. I've been seeing people get a little bit more relaxed than what they should be, right? Um, because we do know that people are being laid off right now. And if you look at the news, guys, we should we should expect more of this, Um but I don't think it's a time to fear. But I feel like people are going in the opposite direction of what they should be. I've been seeing people, and this is just me, just having conversations with people, things of that sort. Because you guys know I'm always chatting with people. So I've been seeing a lot of people have the more the mindset of they just want to kind of keep their head down. And what they're wanting to do now is do like a really, really, really good job to secure the role that they have now. I can understand the concept of that. Right. I can understand the concept of you like, you know, what I want to do, Alicia, is I want to just go very, very hard in my role so I can do a really, really good job. So if they were to have to lay anybody off, it wouldn't be me. And I don't necessarily agree with that because this is the thing, y'all. You cannot make yourself irreplaceable at work. I don't care who you are. At the end of the day, if they need to cut costs, if they need to make a change, if they need to restructure, it is what it is. And that's why I tell you guys, you know, don't take this stuff to heart because it really is. It's not you. Right. And so when you get into the mindset of, you know, I need to just just have my head down and stay focused and make sure I don't get fired. You are missing out on what this time should be about. Nobody. Absolutely. I don't care how good you are in your job right now. Nobody should get to a point to where you feel safe right now. And again, this live stream is not to provoke fear in you whatsoever, but I want to be able to bring a reality to you guys so you can take this time to prepare. Don't get afraid, but prepare. And, and that's why I want to talk about what it means to really be intentional in your career and really take this time of when maybe everybody else is being afraid, take this time to just, hey, let me put some stuff in place. And so I had a post that I made this week on LinkedIn and I said, don't be afraid of being laid off. Ask yourself this. If I was laid off, would I know what is the next step for me? Would I, would I know how to actually operate in the current job space that we're in? Would I know the options that I have available to me? And a lot of people answer is no, right? Because they're thinking, okay, what I need to do is just go extra, extra, extra hard at work so I can secure this spot rather than being in a mindset to create more opportunities. I want you to not have to walk into every, you know, every day at work thinking, is this the day? No, I want you to be prepared. But the only way that you can really prepare yourself like this is for you to allow it to be a reality that I could lose my job. But a lot of people don't want to do that. They want to hide from the fact that, hey, my job is not secure as I think it is. You have people at like Microsoft, you know what I mean, who was who've been there for 16, 20 years and they was laid off. Right. So we know that the season that we are in, y'all, it's like nobody is special and, and nobody is exempt. Now, do I think that you need to start getting really, really clear on the value that you add in the workplace you're in now? Absolutely. So I'm not saying to not be aware of where you stand, because I feel like if you are in a place to where you, you do enjoy your job. Right. I feel like you need to be getting clear on the value that you add there and you need to start to make that known because a lot of times you can start to feel like I'm doing a really, really great job here. They should know, but a lot of times they could know of some results that you bring forth, but they don't have the full idea of how it is that you get those results or or the the actual frameworks and the thought and all the expertise and detail that you use at work, they don't know that all they see is that this job is 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 done, right? And so even if you haven't started to have 
um, talk to the people that you work with. Start having those conversations and start to allow them in to see the actual impact that you make in your role. So this definitely is a time to make sure that you are able to show up in your workplace as you should be, right? This this is not the time to be at work scared and just, I don't, you know, don't y'all talk to me. No, this is the time to make yourself known in the workplace. But this is also the time for you to start to think about if I had to move, like, would I know how to go out and create opportunities or will I feel like I'm in a place of just, oh my God, I'm lost now. And this is what happens a lot of times with people, whenever they, they, um, they lose their job, they feel lost because they didn't even allow their mind to go to the place of, I may not have this job always. That is a reality that I want to be able to bring you guys here this morning is to where you can start to really be able to identify where you are, right? Start to think about being um, being more intentional in your career, but also starting to get the mindset of, hey, is all these little things that I'm doing, all of these assignments, all of these jobs that I wanted to apply for, is all of these moves that I'm wanting to make, is this going to add to that main goal, right? And I know a lot of people don't really think about that. Um, you guys know I talk a lot about there are seasons when you have to take a job to survive, right? So there are times when you may like, Alicia, I want to be more intentional, but right now I have kids to feed. I get it, right? But I feel like even in those moments, even if you have to take a job to just survive, I feel like even in those moments, you still need to really get clear on, hey, even though I'm here right now, this is still these goals that I have. And so- um, first, first, I want to talk about the reason why you need to be intentional. And I keep on using the word intentional. All I mean is that you need to be deliberate in the career choices that you make. There needs to be a reason why you make the career choices that you make, meaning that the those choices that you make, they need to get you closer to what it is that you want. So, you know, a lot of people, they just tend to just, you know, especially in the middle of a job search, just start hitting apply to everything they see. <laughs> apply, 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 apply. But I want you guys to start thinking about even if you are in a job search or if you are looking for a new role, what is the intention or the expectation of this job search for me? Is this job search to just hold me over until I am in a place to where I can maybe go after the role that I really want? Is this next move for me the move, the, the job that I've been um, having on my list for years? Getting clear on what is the, the reason why you do what it is that you do, okay? And so a lot of people are in a place where they really are just coasting, which means like, Alicia, I'm just going to you know, every day I just kind of hop up and I just kind of see how things going to be. It is what it is. You are one that you are not trying to be. Um, you don't really take the first step in wanting to advance in your career. You kind of just sit back and wait for opportunities to just kind of fall back on you, that kind of thing. Um, and with this also, you can also find yourself, you just kind of wait for things to happen to you, right? And I've been there, guys. Right. Because sometimes you be like, I don't have the energy. But again, I want you guys to go back and think about the time that we are in now and think about you need to start taking time to think about where your career is. You want to think about where your, your actual career is on the road to and if you even want to go that way. So what, what I want to talk about now is I want to talk about the role of being self-aware and how that plays into all of this right? It's going to be important for you guys to start getting really clear on, are you even operating in your strengths right now? In the role that you have now, even that the role that you may are trying to seek, right? Does this role give you the opportunity to even operate in the strengths that you have? Because if you are operating in a role that do not use your strengths, that do not use those core skills, that do not even allow you to be able to thrive, you are just coasting. Because if you're not operating in that zone, where do you think it actually leads you to? It leads you to just being mediocre. And this, and we're in the kind of job space, guys. We're in this kind of workforce where you can't afford to be mediocre. 
you can't afford to not be clear on the value that you bring. You cannot afford to not operate in your strengths, right? And a lot of times you're not able to see the fulfillment and you're not able to see the advancement that you want to see is because you're not operating in your strengths. It's, it's not that you don't have enough. It's just that your role does not allow you to tap into your core skills. Those core skills, those strengths, that is what's going to allow you to stand out. That is what's going to allow you to bring forth the results that you desire to bring forth. It's going to be those core skills. Do you know your core skills, right? Do you know those those that skill set and those tasks that you excel at? Do you know that or do you find yourself always being pushed into stuff that you really don't want to do? And you don't realize that when you don't want to operate in something that is going to affect how you perform. This is why I help my clients to be able to identify what is your zone of genius, right? And the higher that you advance in your role, the more important it is going to be for you to know that, right? Especially when you are, are having to lead a team, it's going to be up to you to for you to know what are your strengths so you are able to operate in your strengths and then you can just delegate the areas that you are weak in. But what tends to happen is that people don't know their, their strengths and they, they're not really clear on their weak areas. So when they start to, to actually lead a team, right, they are still stuck in, they operate in those weak areas or those areas that don't really bring forth the results and they let their team operate which is really their strengths. They let their team operate in their strengths. So that's why it looks like their team always outshines them. But that's because you just don't know what are the core skills that you have. And the market is so competitive and the workplace is so competitive that you got to know what is that secret sauce that you bring? Where do you fit in this whole job space? Not just thinking, and the thing about it is what, what brings that fulfillment is not just knowing what you do well, but what do you enjoy? Because the more that you enjoy doing something, the more that you're going to thrive in it and the more that you will stand out and the more that you will lean in it and the more that you are going to master it. But if you don't know that, if you just, you're always on the end of just, I'll just take whatever I can get, right? You don't realize, and this, and, and, and this is where that self-doubt comes into play. That feeling of, I don't have enough. That feeling of, oh, you know, um, everybody always, um, like you feel, start feeling like everybody around you gets the very things that you want. It's just that you have not yet put yourself in a position to receive those things. What part do you play in the company's success? Where does your skill set fall in the overall success. And it's the thing, it's so good to know this. Like if anybody is in marketing, I think it's a great field, but you got to know well, the field you're in. And you have to know that in tough times is my field, is it something that can be is seen as disposable? Now me, I own a business. So when I'm thinking about marketing, to me, I would invest in that before I invest in anything else, right? But I, again, I am a small business, right? So when you're thinking about um, a company that's very large, a company that is very already um, successful, they don't think like that because they think that their brand and everything has already been established. So in, in hard times like this, they just tend to ride off a brand that they have already made. My business, I've been in business three and a half years now, so I'm I'm still considered new, right? So for me, I'm going to invest in that because I need to be able to be more known and things of that sort. When you have a company that's large, they're not thinking about that. In rough times, they think about, I need to ride off the brand that we've already established. So a lot of times, marketing roles in tough times is going to be one of the first roles that are cut, Right. I'm not saying that you should not pursue the field. I think it's a great field. But what you do need to get clear on is one, what are my skills in this field that I can use for something else? And also, even in your field, getting clear on what 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 is that secret sauce or that niche that you fit into? Is it copywriting? Because that's huge right now. Is it really content? If you are in a field, this is the time to get clear on where does my field stand in tough times right now? Recruitment. You got to know this. I was in a field for over 10 years, right? It's a great field, but you got to know in tough times, 
this is going to be one of the of the roles that is going to be cut. Why? Because when times are tough, they're not hiring anybody. So therefore, they don't need your role right now. So do you know how to take your skills and actually pivot them to something else? That's why it's clear for you to get clear on what are those um, core skills. You got to get clear on what are your core skills because when you know those core skills, you can pivot to anything and be confident. But when you just tie yourself to a field or a job title, that's how you get stuck. And the workforce that we are in now, you got to be able to know how to be able to pivot on your skills. And all that should do, that should not make you confused, that should not allow you to be scared. That should make you feel confident. That should make you show up to your job and feel secure in yourself. Because you know that employer that you work for, they don't keep your skills. You can take your skills anywhere. That Two, I'm not stuck to this job title. I add value everywhere I go. Three, you got to know that I don't never have to put up with something that it doesn't serve me because I can make a move because I know the value that comes with me, right? So this is why the clients that I work with is not about finding the perfect job title for you. It's about you knowing where do you fit in the midst of all this and the value that you bring and knowing how to align your expertise to different fields. That's when you start to feel powerful. That's when you start to feel sure because you know that I got options. Even in the middle of a recession, you got options. But if you don't know where you fit in the midst of all this, if you've been head down in your role for the last six, seven years, just trying to put out work, it is going to seem scary. You are going to feel like I don't have no options. All I know how to do is this. And so this is what I mean when I say become intentional in your career, start to think about and start to make a plan of one. If I had to make a move today, would I know what to do? Would you even know who to talk to? Would you even know who to lean on? When you're able to understand your strengths, when you're able to understand those weak areas, when you're able to understand the values that you have, you won't ever be in a place in your career where you will feel lost. You may feel unsure for a moment. It is one thing to feel unsure. It's another thing to feel lost or to feel stuck, right? Because like, because Houston, I go to Houston all the time, right? I, I live right outside of Houston. I, I go to Houston all the time. And anybody in Houston, you know, all them highways, I'd be like, this is too much. But the thing about it is, I know that I am in Houston. I know that I am on the south side of Houston or the whatever side. I know where I am. I'm a little unsure exactly um, which way to kind of go to get to where I want to be. But I do know that I am on the south side of Houston and I know that I am on 610 right now. So I'm not lost. I'm not completely stuck, but I'm a little unsure right now. Right. So there may be season in your career where you are a little unsure. Like, man, hmm, I know that I want to do this. I just don't know if I should do this or this first. But when you get to a point in your career where you don't have absolute clue what the next step should be, you put yourself in a really, really, really vulnerable place to where if you was to lose your job at any time, now what? And so when we're talking about being intentional in your career, it's just simply talking about you owning it, right? You being able to know that I can't let the job that I work for, I can't let my boss, I cannot let them take full control of my career and I cannot let them dictate how successful I'll be. But it's going to take you, for one, to get clear on what you want. It also takes you to decide, do you still want the career that you have? You know, when you look at the average career, the average career, I mean, the average career, I would say last about, you know, most people will retire around 65 ish. I know now it's, it's going to be a little later because times are changing. Things are high. So I would say about 65 ish is the average time that somebody is is pretty much done. You may not start to maybe you're like 20, 22, 23. So I'm going to say it's a good solid 40 years, maybe 35 to 40 years of a career. Do y'all know how many careers you could could have in that time span? <laughs> like, do y'all know how, how many career paths that you could take? But so many people are stuck on that they, they got to just choose one thing. 
over a 35 year period, you can literally like reinvent your career every 10 years at the least. So don't keep thinking that you got to stay on the path that you're that you're on. Who told you that? Right. Don't be afraid, afraid to explore. If there was if you are looking for a new job right now, there was ever a time to explore. My friend, this is the time. <laughs> Sometimes let me say this. Being laid off, being fired does not feel good. Hey, Miss Sharon, being laid off, being fired does not feel good. It doesn't. But sometimes those are the best opportunities for you to get clear on what you want. Those are the best opportunities for you to sell. And you say, you know what? I, I'm a little hurt. They ain't got my job, but I didn't really like that anyway. What is it that, that I want? I need to make this next move about me. Don't think that you got to stay on this same career path for 15, 20, 25 years. Friend, you can pivot. You can change your mind. And guess what? Every time you decide to change, you don't have to start over, right? You're simply just wanting to build on what you've already done and go in a different direction. Sometimes it's simply about, I just want to change the people that I serve with my skills, right? Sometimes it's about, I want to save the, the, uh, the same people. I just want to serve them with some other skills, right? So be open to being able to explore and not feeling like you got to be stuck in a box. And in every pivot you make, you can go in and make more money. But I, I know all of this comes from how we've been taught. We've been taught to, ooh, this is what we, we've been taught that, how can I put it? We've been taught that if you want to be stable, it looks like this. It means to be stable means to stay in one spot and don't move. And I know that our parents did the best thing they could. And guess what, y'all? That advice, that worked for them. That advice, that worked for older people. But we live in a whole different time. And now that advice is hurting us. It's causing us to stay in places where we are being underpaid. It's causing us to stay in places where we are not being able to advance in our role. It's causing us to stay in places that where our skills are being are being made to go stale and they are being they are outdated. That advice does not serve us anymore. It, it hurts us, right? That advice no longer serves us. So I, I even want you to be able to even shift what you think the word stable means. Stable does not mean to stay stuck and to stay in one spot. Stable means to be sure. Right. Stable means to be sure. And we have to come to the reality that no job is permanent. So you even thinking of what stable is, stable does not necessarily mean that you are employed. Because even when you are employed, friend, that ain't stable. I think in the last six months, many people find out they found out that this stable job they so thought they had was not so stable. So anytime you're even employed, you're, you won't ever be 100% stable. Stable is, I know that if I got to make a move, I know how to make a move. That is what being stable is. It has nothing to do with who you work for. It's all about how prepared you are. Like that is, that's what it means to be stable. We don't live in a time now. And the reality is, no, I'm not going to say nobody. Most people will not find a job and stay there for the next 30 years. And if you happen to do that, I guarantee you, you are losing out on money. Because all they do is throw these little 2% raise here and there anyway. And you're losing money. So you may very well be stable, but are you thriving? You find yourself stable, but are you even able to meet a lot of the needs that you want in your life? No, because you would rather feel stable than thrive. Or you would rather survive than thrive. And if you want to do that, cool. I'm not here to judge you. right? But I really want us to be able to shift what stable really looks like. And know that you being stable has nothing to do with who you work for. Because all these people that work for Facebook, Amazon, all these big companies, they thought that they had a stable, stable, stable role. And guess what? It ain't stable. When the reality was Facebook, Amazon, all these big companies was the first people to lay off. And, and people were, will literally look down on a, a brand or a role where that particular name isn't that well known. Oh, no. I'd rather go to Facebook and Amazon, but maybe that that the other role that you didn't want in that certain company you ain't never heard of, they haven't let nobody go. They still holding on to all their people. Now, there's nothing wrong if you want to work with Amazon and Facebook, right? Nothing wrong with that. But my thing is you being able to work for them, that don't make you stable. It's about you being able to be aware of where you are now and do you even want what you have right now? And guess what? If you decided... Alicia, I don't want this no more. Cool, right? Get clear on why you don't want it though because you don't want to go and build something else that you don't want again. 
I think that you really need to get clear on why is it that you don't want something. But I do believe that it is okay to change your mind. It's okay to decide, I don't want to do this no more. And guess what? It doesn't take anything from you. But a lot of you guys, you take your career too too personal. So when it's time to leave something or when it's time to go to that next level, you feel like you failed. Because in your mind, success means just stay with it, sticking with it. That, that is, that's my success. Oh, I just got to stick with it and I just got to grind. And you know, it's not, it doesn't give you what you need, but you're tied to what it means to have a successful career. It just means to have less jobs, right? So if I can say in, in the last 10 years, I've only worked three places, friend, I'm this is stable. Who set that bar? That's almost like saying I have a husband who cheats all the time. But hey, he come home to me every night. Baby, that bar is low. Okay, that bar is not even on the ground. That bar is in hell. Like, yeah, you know, he out here with all these other women, but he come home to me every night. Is is that the bar? Like, but, but this is how you sound. This is how you sound when you go, hey, I got a job. They, it ain't give you nothing. The stuff is getting more and more expensive. No, like pick the bar up. This, and this is, I say it all the time. I hear people say all the time. I want a job that pays me, you know, like my worth. Okay. That's the bare minimum. Are we able to dig a little bit deeper in your expectations? Do you have any expectations that are, are more than what should already be being done? Oh, that's a word. Do you have expectations that are more than what should already be being done? People say, you know, a boss, I want to work for a boss that just respects me. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> That's the bare minimum. And it's, you know, sometimes it can be hard for you to be intentional in your career when your expectations are low because you're always in a fight to get the bare minimum. Your mind can't even expand to what else is, is possible. Because you're always just scraping after the, the bare crumbs. So for your mind to even think that you could make an extra 30, 40, 50 grand, you can't see that. It's hard for you to see that because you sitting up here trying to stress out if the people give you a 1.5% raise. So for you to even be able to imagine you making an extra 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, and yes, it's possible. I've helped clients get up to $75,000 raises. Right. You, you can't even imagine yourself being able to make that amount of money because you don't even know if you're worth a 1.5 percent raise. Child, I'm sitting up here with my jaw swollen because I, I told y'all this this week I was having <laughs> issues with my tooth. Child. And you're going to have to start to realize that you're worth so much more than that. And, and start to ask yourself, why is it that are you OK with just the bare crumbs? When you exceed expectations, when you exceed, you ex exceed expectations everywhere you go. You are one of the hardest. You work harder than anybody everywhere you go, but you expect to receive less than, than what everybody else exceeds. Where did that come from? Where did that belief come from? Who told you that? Why have you even taught yourself that? You exceed expectations everywhere you go, but you only should get the bear when John, who sits on the side of you all day, don't halfway do nothing. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. In order to be intentional, you even have to be, be able to even check what are the beliefs that you believe about yourself, right? What is it that you have trained yourself to believe that you are even worthy to even deserve? Because you can be intentional in your career, but you're being intentional about the wrong thing. So the answer is not a new job. The answer is a new you. The answer to all this confusion is a new mind, is a new belief system about yourself. It ain't a new job because all you're going to do is go find a new job and do the same thing. And you're going to keep playing yourself over and over again, just like you're doing now. So the answer is not a new job. For what? So you can leave the job you have now and go to the next job and keep playing yourself. That, that's, that's not the answer. And all you do is every time you go from job to job to job and you do not get clear on your value, you do not get clear on what it is that you want and deserve, it takes a punch at your self-esteem every job. Because what, what tends to happen is 
is that you start thinking that, ooh, I don't have enough. So as you get job after job, you get worse. You, you find yourself getting worse and worse. You, you find yourself feeling worse and worse because you, you're thinking, man, I'm going to every single job and nobody sees my worth. No, you going to every single job and you not seeing your worth. So you getting a new job is not the answer. It's you being a new you. You needing to be able to sit down and get clear on what it is that you need and want. You have to be able to sit down and get clear on why do I keep playing myself and be honest with yourself. Sometimes being honest with ourselves, baby, it hurts. Being honest and saying, you know what? I've been in my career for 10 years. Ain't, I've, been, I've been in my career 10, 15, 20, 20. Ain't no way I'm still making 65K. Ain't no, be honest with yourself and say, man, I am underpaid because I have never asked for the things that I've wanted. I've only been in a a place to where I I can just receive whatever I can get. Being honest with yourself, not saying, oh, they don't like me. So they didn't give me the raise. No, they didn't give you the raise because you didn't open up your mouth and ask for it. Being honest with yourself and say, and being honest, the reason why I didn't ask for the raise was because I really didn't think I even deserve the raise. Who going to be honest about that and say, yeah, I've been saying it with, with my mouth that I want the raise. But I never really believed that I deserved it. So when you ask for the raise, they don't necessarily hear the words you're saying. What they see is the energy that you give off. The energy that you give off is, I don't really know if I can. I mean, I wanted to know if you guys could think and if you could be so nice and kind to, that's the energy that you give off. And so that kind of energy is easy to just, okay, yeah, sorry, it's not. You know, this this year really didn't do as good as we thought we was going to do, though they made an extra five, six million dollars. Oh, we really didn't do it as, as good as we thought we was going to do this year. So, you know, maybe next year. See, all that 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 energy is easy to just show. Just all right. Yeah. Bye. But that energy like, look, I know what I bring to the table and that energy of because it's the thing. Your job, they know when you're not afraid to to just walk away. A lot of people give off that, oh my God, I'm just so grateful to have this job. I don't know what I would do without an energy. And you wonder why you keep on being lowballed and you don't advance because you give off the energy of, I'm just so happy to be here rather than you had a problem. My skill set solves that problem and I'm here to help you because you need me. That check you get every two weeks, that ain't no favor. You are being compensated because you solve a problem for them. So when you get that energy of this is a partnership, I don't owe you a favor. When you hired me, you didn't hire me, you know what I'm saying? Because you were so nice and kind. You hired me because you had a problem to be solved. And I'm here to solve that problem. But I'm also here to also be served. They don't know what to do with that. I want y'all to shift how you're thinking about yourself for one. And I want you to think about how you're thinking about your career. Again, this is not a time to scare you, but there was ever a time to get serious about where your career is going. This is the time now. This was ever a time to invest in yourself. This is the time now. This is it. Why? Because everybody else is playing scared. Everybody else is trying to play it as soft as I'm gonna soft, as safe as possible. I'm just going to tiptoe into work so I don't bring no unnecessary attention to myself because I just want to keep my little job. And they already having meetings about people being laid off and you don't even know about it. (laughs) So if this was ever a time to pick your head up, up out of your work and sit back and think about where am I? Where? What else can I do if I had to make a move? This is a time now. Y'all know I I worked in HR for over 10 years. I hired for the first probably six and a half, seven. Last few years were just strictly talent management. I know what I'm talking about. I know the meetings that they have in the back room, okay? To you, all of these, oh, I I just found out 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 the blue that that my role was going to be laid off. That It went out the blue. And that's why this is the time if you you don't have conversations with your boss or your, start having them. It, it don't have to be, oh, I wanted to know, um, y'all going to let me go? It ain't got to be all that. <laughs> it, don't, it, it don't have to be all that. It ain't got to be all that, okay? Because, again, you need to be careful of the energy that you give off. 
Just talk with them to see where are things headed. Talk with them. Ask them, hey, also, there's nothing wrong with being honest. I'm a big fan of just being honest, not rude, but being honest about stuff. Hey, I've seen there, there's a whole lot of things happening. Hey, where do we stand? Use the word we, not me or you. No, we, okay? You need to have it in their mind. It's a we thing, even though it may not be. Again, it's all about how you approach them. If their talk is very vague, if they trying to act like, oh, it's great. I ain't worried about that. Red flag, every company in America, I'm a small business owner and I am putting thought into what the next year could look like for me. I'm small. So you don't think these other huge ones are? So if, you're, if your job has not said anything to you about what is all of this changes that's going on, that's a red flag, right? Because I feel like when they are open, hey guys, I'm pretty sure that the team has been able to see in our in our field these and this and this is going on not saying that it can't happen but when you're more open about it i'm like okay but when you're trying to act like things are normal and things that ain't how the way if how they are that's a red flag to me so i think it's really really important for you to start having conversations and start getting a feel of what the conversations are and the more they're like oh it's fine girl don't worry about that the more you need to be on your cubes if you need help with this, guys, if you're like, Alicia, I really do need a solid plan. I'm really in a place to where if I was to lose my job tomorrow, I don't know where I would be. Send me a message. If you want to work with me a one-to-one, -one, send me a message. You, you can definitely go on my website. I am AliciaPerkins.com and find out more. Let's talk. So you guys know that I do have a group called The Best You. So that if this is anybody that is wanting to move into a more senior role, and you want to increase your salary by five figures, I have a group for that. We meet every other week. Um, and so, and then the other way is going to be a VIP day. Now that is that is more of a strategy set, a strategy call, but it's more of a, it could be anywhere between three to four hours, right? This has transformed the clients that I work with because a lot of you guys think you need Zoom call after Zoom call, the Zoom call in order to see results and you don't. Right. And so that is going to be the only two ways for a while that you will be able to work with me. So if you definitely want to comp to find more information now, please contact me. It's time to get into the mindset to invest in yourself. I do offer installment plans as well. Right. So I don't want you guys to be like, well, I don't know. And I tell people, I say, come in my DMs and just shoot your shot. Like so some of you guys will literally talk yourself out of things before you even really found out. <laughs> everything that you need to know. So if you would like more information on how to work with me, please contact me. I'm so glad you guys are blessed. So, so, so glad you guys are blessed. So I will talk to you later. You guys have a great day. Bye.